Yep, so it's just loading now. Steven, you want to say we're live on Facebook now? We're live. Let's go, man. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for it to come up on here. Yep. You got it on your phone? I have it on my phone, just waiting for it to come up. Okay. Yeah, I see it. You see it? Mm -hmm. You see you see me? Yeah. All right. I don't know why I can't see on my side. That's weird. You see you see me? Yeah. It is kind of a delay, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know why I can't see on my side. That's weird. Yeah. It is kind of a delay, huh? Mm -hmm. That's odd. Okay. Well, give me one second. Hold on. All right, well, Steven, you can see me, right? Yeah. And you can see comments on your phone? Uh, Let me see, bro. Yeah, I can see you now, man. Okay. If you see, because I can't see it on my end, if you see the comments, just um, let me know, okay? Can be in track of that because I can't see it on my side. I don't know why. I got you. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, so got two minutes here. Just wait. For, come on. I know you can see it. That's all that matters right now. So, okay. So right here, we are about to launch and talk about our first coach predictions for USC 264. Um, this is a huge fight. Okay. It's a third fight. Anyone who's been around the fighting game long enough knows that trilogies are huge. The reason why there is the tiebreaker to see who is the better man or woman in the ring or the cage. We have Dustin Poyer and the diamond, and we have the notorious Connor McGregor. Now, I'm Irving Jones. I am an exercise specialist, personal trainer, martial artist, X, Y, and Z. I'm also a certified ACE as a personal, I mean, ACSM as a personal trainer and ACE with group fitness instruction and a black belt we have here with me. Hey, I'm Steven Storniolo and uh, I'm based out of Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm an NASM certified personal trainer and former uh, amateur boxer. Um, and I also, I think it's we need to point out that you and I used to work together. Yep. A long, long time ago, we started a fight program together. Um, and that was definitely holds dear to my heart because it grew into something bigger with everybody fights is definitely a landing platform for the company we were looking, working for. So good job there, man. You were the first boxing coach there. I just came along. He helped me along the way uh, <laughs> as I got certified and everything. Um, that was, I can't believe how long has it been? Was it since 2016? Yeah. I was thinking about that, man. That's been uh, Atlanta. That's been already, God, seven years, six years. Seven years. Wow. 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 We I, I appreciate Yeah. It's been a long time. It's crazy how time flies, man. Yep. I appreciate it. We've only made each other better over the years, which is great. So, um, but yeah, let's get underway. And just for those who are coming in, I know it's 11 a.m. again. I'm Irving, and this is? Steven Storniola. Okay, and also, so I'm from Atlanta, Steven's from Jacksonville, so if you are in our neck of the woods, please give us a shout out at some point. So, 
right here, once again, we're talking about Conor McGregor versus Justin Poirier tonight, and that will be on the main card in the main event as a last fight. So as we go into it, understand, guys, this is going to be a close fight. Right, Steven? I mean, this is going to be a close fight. This is not going to be a, you know, just a one and done for sure. I don't think it is. Yeah, on paper, it's it, – it's, I mean, uh, if we look at the betting odds, it's a 50-50 fight. Right now, uh, it's a coin toss. Right. So let's talk, let's introduce the fighters for those people that don't know. So how about you talk to us about Dustin, Steven? Yeah, Louisiana boy, which is actually where I'm uh, personally from. So kind of uh, close to my heart. But he actually uh, – Dustin is from Lafayette, Louisiana, 27-6, and six, uh, one no contest. Um, and let's look at a couple of his numbers, Irv, uh, five, nine, and he weighed in at what? 156, correct? Right. So yeah, they're both weighing at 156. So one, and also guys, this is the lightweight division. So these guys are going to be focusing more on speed and technique than most, than a, a heavyweight would. I mean, a heavyweight, you know, they really don't go the distance a lot of the times because they're just so huge and massive. They have the force behind them. These guys really have to be precise with their strikings and keep the tempo of the fight going too as well um what else can we say about dustin yeah dustin and, and i think uh we talked about a little about his uh leg reach which uh you could probably you know we'll touch more on but he actually has a half inch reach so we'll we'll see if that uh kind of plays a part but mm -hmm. um yeah and his age as well is 32 um and go ahead and let, let's talk about connor a little bit yep mr mystic mac so to speak right um he's from ireland Definitely an inspiration of the Irish na nation for sure. You see them coming out for his fights all the time. Um, oh, yeah. He's been a two-time title champion, um, which is very hard for a lot of people to actually change weight classes and win in those classes. Right. Um, fighting career has been spectacular. I think he's had a 22 victories, five losses, uh, zero draws. And his specialties, along with Dustin, right? This is something we talked about um, earlier this week, is that on paper, they literally are the same person when it comes to fighting. Like it's it's very yeah. odd, right? You don't see that a lot. Like they're both um, brown belts in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Both come from a very boxing focused background, right? right? And they both know their way around the leg kick game, right? I mean, they don't know kickboxing now. I think McGregor might have a little more kicking experience with Taekwondo and karate, but that comes with MMA a lot of the time and depending it's not like you could say oh i'm a black belt in taekwondo karate with these guys but they at least know a good amount right to perform the way that they do right you know that kind of a, a transition into you know the background of what happened in the first fight second fight um you know i think we could touch base on that a little bit yeah so let's let's go and let's dive right into it so um, the background of the first two fights, right? I think this is huge when it comes to predicting because this is for those of you at home who are just tuning in. This is a coach talk where we focus on predictions before the fight that is tonight. Tomorrow we will be getting up at 11 a.m. again to really rehash what happened in the fight. So this is the first part of the series. So right here, we talk about the background of the fight because that's where we start, right, as coaches. We're like, okay, what happened before that – it's going to tell us who's going to win now, who's more likely to win. Correct, Steven? Right. Yeah, now the first fight, first round TKO, a uh, minute and 46 in the first round. By McGregor, right? Correct. Right. And McGregor, would you agree at that time, had more experience in the cage? Yeah, he came in with a lot of confidence, um, you know, and, and you could see that he was putting so much pressure on Dustin, right, backing him up, forcing him to fight backwards. Um. Right. And it's tough if you don't know how to box going, you know, backing up. And when somebody's putting pressure on you, um, it's tough, man. It's it, it's tough. And he finished him quick in that first fight. Yeah, because Dustin really was trying to box a little bit. Then he went for a few low leg kicks. And it just didn't work, right? I mean, because of the pressure that was on him. Um, with the TKO, for those of you at home that don't know, technical, TKO means technical knockout, meaning um, Poirier could not continue. But the right. thing about... Now let's talk about the second fight, right? Like 257, right? That was earlier this year, six months ago, right? Quick turnaround. Right, quick. It, now that was, yeah, now this is, the third one's a quick turnaround for sure, but this actually was the opposite where Dustin won two minutes, 32 seconds in the second round and knocked out Conor McGregor. 
Now, the leg checking was, you know, the low leg kicks was definitely a key to victory for Dustin, right? I mean, he literally stopped McGregor in his tracks. He hit that um, calf, you know, with the low leg round kicks, and he kept hammering at it again and again and again until it just stopped. It's basically like McGregor, if you've ever seen McGregor fight, he's very, he flows, right? Right. There's right. a continuous motion. Dustin took his momentum away. Right. And talk about a little bit about what happens when you get kicked in a leg like that. You cannot put, you know, that pressure on that front leg when, you know, you need to sit down on your punches. And it, I mean, I haven't been kicked in a leg as much as you have probably, but talk a little bit about that. Just being real, folks, it sucks. <laughs> OK, because it it stops you dead in your tracks you cannot move you cannot put pressure on it so imagine not only walking this hard now you're trying to fight someone as you do it you can't you're a sitting mm -hmm. duck so that's how Dustin was able to really get those hooks and those punches in to McGregor and just finish him off right there but he literally was strategic about it because he threw a couple of them before it got to that point anyway like your body's very resilient so to get to the point where he's stopping your tracks that's a lot so right at first right he he didn't have a chance to do that. You know, he didn't have a chance to, um, you know, set up some of those kicks. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens, man, in this third fight here. Right. And so just go before we go into the next thing, guys, like when it comes to, here's what a lot of you guys at home have to understand. Steve, won't you agree that changing any kind of movement pattern is probably the hardest thing someone can do if you've been doing it a certain way all your life? Oh, yeah, 100%. Right. So not only like changing the way you walk, right, that's hard enough, but changing the way you fight is very hard. So the significance for this, guys, is that UFC 178 was back in 2014. Right. So almost, what, seven years ago? Yeah, almost seven years ago. Dustin had a lot of time to prepare. He gained a lot more experience. He was a different fighter altogether, I'd say from UFC 178 to UFC 257. Now we're here six months later at 264. And McGregor only had six months compared to seven years that Dustin had to change his ways if he needed to change his game at all. Right. And that, that means a lot now. I mean, you're talking game plans. You're talking, um, you know, time to prep and, and make some adjustments. But um that's a quick turnaround, six months. It's time, but not a lot of time at all. Right. I mean, it's it's not. And the thing is, um, when you – and this is what we really harped on throughout the week is that one of the major points about fighting is that a lot of people think it starts in the cage or the ring. That could be further from the truth. It starts when it's announced that you're going to fight this person. Right. The, men the mentality, the uh, head games. Right. Uh, Dustin actually said the first time – 257 he said i knew i wasn't focusing on the other fights coming up i was focusing on the next one with him him being mcgregor because i knew they wanted another one because it was one right. right and he's not sleeping on mcgregor i mean he knows that mcgregor has a lot of experience um mcgregor definitely has raised the ufc similar to ronda rousey did you know back in the 2000s um raised the ufc to another level right and there's a reason for it so, and also when we look at this fight, right, they're pro the fighters themselves are approaching it differently. In what sense? Let's talk uh, mentality wise. The 178, very aggressive. They couldn't stand each other. Like, I mean, they, they were trash talking nonstop. I mean, it, it was a heated press conference. You know, they had to hold them back a few times. The second one, I it mean, was more low key, right? Very yeah. low key, very gentlemanly, very business like. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, they were even exchanging products that they sell during right. the photo shoot. <laughs> like, that, McGregor throw, tossing his hot sauce off the set. I mean, total disrespect. Total right. disrespect. For, for this for this one, right? I mean, yeah, like. Right. It, but the last one, he's like, "No, I'm going to take his hot sauce, and then he and I'm going to give him some of my alcohol." Yeah. Now, is that for show, or or, or is Connor? You know, the bravado is. Or is he hungry? That that I mean, we just we're talking about that looks can be deceiving. Right. Now we're talking about, but I'm talking about the last, I'm just saying on 257 for a second. Yeah. Like, right. That's that's what people have to understand. It's like this was a very calm 
Like normally people are, you know, people want to see that, you know, head to head going at it, whatever. They, everybody knew these two were already hard, hard guys going in. Everybody knew that this was going to be a good fight. But the fact that there was no, like you said, bravado, the fact there was no aggression really spoke a lot because you're about to go, you're being nice to a person you're about to go in and tear the head off. Yeah. And, and, and look what the result of that second fight that was, you know, I mean, as far as uh, Connor goes, I also looked at an interesting fact between this fight and the last fight when it comes to mentality is that apparently McGregor was supposed to put $500,000 towards Dustin's charity. And there was a delay which started causing more friction. And I think that's why Mm -hmm. He's tossing his hot sauce off. The, there's a little friction there now, which is good for, you know, um, hyping the fight up. But like we just talked about, is that is that looks can be deceiving? I mean, right. I mean, he did the same thing with Mayweather. You know, this happens all the time with fighters. Um, you know, they really and plus not to mention um, mentality wise, guys, fighting is not just throwing hands. OK, mm -hmm. if you can get into someone's head before the fight even starts, you beat them. That's the whole right. point of it. Like, really, all the showboat and all the trash talking, saying, I'm going to knock you out. We're going to talk about a few of that stuff in a second. But the thing is, is that it is mentally, mentally, spiritually, and physically challenging, no matter who you are. It doesn't matter. In fact, when Dustin was talking about camp, now they do fight camps like Steve was talking about as they prepare and everything. He said the first thing he loves is the first week because he sees everybody. He's getting a training again. He's getting back into the zone. The last two weeks are the most grueling. Right. Because you you want to get to this point. You want to be able to just walk in the cage and you're with because not only it's not like an amateur fight, Stephen, you've been in this situation, right? But there's not a lot of cameras flashing. There's not a lot of media in your face. There's not, you know, there's just but there's still that anticipation that someone is going to be fighting you in right. this amount of time, right? Yeah, and that's huge. And but I think these guys are both professionals where they, you know, the the head games, mind game kind of stuff they're doing is not going to be relevant because mm -hmm. Dustin, we talked about this yesterday. He is, that guy's tough. He's tough. And I don't, um, I don't think that's going to play a part with, with the head games and stuff, but Connor's coming in. I saw that a little bit of the press conference and he looks hungry, man. He, he, he looks hungry. He looks ready. He, he looks ready. He looks, he looks ready to go. He looks like the McGregor we saw you know, at 178, he looks, he looks like the, the McGregor. And he even said it. He's like, you, you think, Oh, you think this is my best like that you saw before? No, no, this mm -hmm. is going to be the best performance yet. You know, he kept saying that the whole night. He also indicated that it was a fluke that Dustin won the second fight. Right. The second fight. He said it was a fluke. Um, I don't think I really agree with that because it appeared that there was a real game plan there on Dustin's end. I mean, I really give credit where it's due. Um, also, D McGregor also came out, like I said, he's more of the aggressive one in this mm -hmm. press conference. I mean, he really was he even called – now, this is going to shake people up at home. He called Dustin – he said Dustin is the wife in the relationship. And also that – yeah. <laughs> and, and also I, that um, Dustin has a husband. That's not his wife. And I was like, wow. Now you're going I didn't catch family. that part. That see. Yeah, <laughs> that's some low blows right there for sure, and I think that'll rattle anyone's cage. Um, but and there hey, was let's a, talk a little bit about strengths and weaknesses since we're kind of touching on that, oh, that stuff a little bit. Oh, hold on, one more thing, one more thing. But when it comes to that, when it comes to that again, it's just that you're seeing a different side of McGregor than you did last time. Yeah, and he he looks ag more aggressive, more hungry, and I, I think he knows he needs this fight because. You know, what's next for him if if he loses this fight, really? I mean, where does he go? Right. And there were there were a lot of questions of that from the reporters in the background, which I'll touch base on later. But yeah, let's go to um more of the intro and fight. Let's talk about the actual environment of the fight, right? So we know that it's the lightweight bout. You know, it's a good, it's a good, it's gonna be a good match. Um, it's not like a flyweight we're gonna see like all speed, right? It's not gonna be like heavyweight where you see all strength and power, but you're gonna see a mixture of a lot of things. Um, it's in Vegas. What do you think about that, Stephen? It being in Vegas. Well, two fifty uh, seven mm -hmm. was in LA. You said right. Right, I believe. Uh, I believe it was Louisiana or LA. Yeah. Well, but uh, Dustin's in Vegas, huh? To, um, tonight. 
yeah, the fight's in Vegas tonight. And the last time, though, we know for sure is that Dustin had the crowd. Right? Mm-hmm. Definitely had the crowd. And for those of you at home who are new to this, the crowd definitely does play a factor to some fighters. Um, McGregor typically comes out much stronger when the Irish are in his corner. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that, right? And so it being in Vegas where they're both very similar, but it's not exactly home, I think that's a really good point for this fight too as well. Um, they're both, you know, a little jet lagged. I mean, not now because it's been several weeks and they've been there, but at the same time, it's not necessarily like, oh, I've been here for a while, right? Right, right. So. That's his training camp. He feels that's going to play a big part. Oh, yeah. And his camp's done a phenomenal job. Both camps, you know, have really trained. Uh, they they both have the same mentality. I think it's like, that's the guy you got to beat, right? Like, they're they're both saying to him, it's like, this is how we need to beat him. This is how it's going to go. But you don't know until you're in that cage. Truly right. Um, how about you talk about Dustin? You were mentioning about the uh, leg reach before, but what else does Dustin have on his plate? Uh, yeah, Dustin, it, it, I mean, he 72-inch reach. So that's really um, what's interesting. Uh, Connor actually has a 74 inch reach, so he's got a couple of inches. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dustin's got a, a half inch on him on the uh leg. But I, I, as far as strengths and weaknesses, I don't know if we agree on this or not, but I think clearly Connor is the better boxer, hands down, hands down, a better boxer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you said you know Dustin can throw hands a little bit, box. Um, I saw a little bit of that, but I, I I think there's a big, big difference there. I think we both agree when it comes to style, right? That's a big thing. I mean, on paper, like we said, I'll just bring up the points again, is that when it comes to height, they're both 5'9", right? Mm-hmm. When it comes to weight, they're both 156, correct? Both are huge factors of fighting. Doesn't matter who you are across the board. 72-inch reach and arm reach, correct? Right, right. Right for Dustin, seventy-four. Member McGregor says so a two-inch reach that does that does have a difference, especially when it comes to a jab and cross striking game. But once again, Dustin's played to his strengths last time with a half inch on Connor, so he has that edge where he can get those low leg kicks easier than McGregor. Right. So, but as for what you said about definitely when it comes to their styles, right? Connor is more precise with his strikes. He's more of a counterpuncher, sure. More of a counterpuncher, more striker. For those of you who have seen Floyd Mayweather before, um, you know, he's definitely a counter striker. You see right. him head to head McGregor, like they did some counter strike on each other, it was pretty cool. But the thing, and he's had, and plus he went toe to toe with Mayweather. Let's talk about that for a second. Like, I mean, even though he lost, he still hung in there for a while, long time. I can't stand any problems with Mayweather. He I know did. that right he, now. He absolutely yeah. did. That was shocking to, to kind of, see that go you know as far as it did I, I believe it was round nine but he did hold his own you know but they're both counter punchers so he he, he was kind of um counter punching floyd a little bit but you know that's uh it kind of what he was doing in the first fight connor with uh dustin right and so dustin for those at home who haven't really tuned into dustin i mean dustin's very athletic very talented obviously that's where he is where he is now but he's more of a brawler right? He's squared up. He's exposing more of his surface area of his body and his torso, which you don't typically don't want because you want to right. make sure you're um, You know, it's, it's one of those things where you definitely take a risk, but you have to condition your body to take those shots if you can. Right. Because what you're trying to do is have more surface area for those hooks and those uppercuts for that knockout power. And actually, that's how he knocked out um, McGregor the second time was a low hook like to the body that landed right on his jaw. It was perfect. Bang! Right? I mean, it was crazy. But it's going to be, but it's not like he's, it's, when I say brawler, it doesn't mean you're dumb. It's just the style that you're trying to portray. Like you're, you're just trading something for more knockout power. The question is with someone like McGregor, who's now ready for those leg kicks, mm-hmm. that's not a distraction anymore from the hands. Who's now saying, okay, I'm kind of on your game about this. What's going to, where is it going to go from here? You right. Know? And that, yeah. And if he keeps it in the middle of the ring, I can, tell you one thing it'll be uh it'll be a long long night for Dustin right he also has to avoid the takedown because Dustin did the takedown on him last time at the conference and even though we did harp on the leg kicks as well Dustin's mentality going on that press conference was that I don't care if it's a calf kick there's so many factors that go into UFC like it doesn't matter like I was a better man that night and I'm like right. okay, is this how you feel about this now then? right because he said 
when they address fear, right? I think that's a big factor. You, as an amateur boxer, you know about this, right? There is that level of fear because you have someone that's going to attack you in a second, right? I mean, oh yeah, that's that's reality, right? I mean, when you get in that ring, you get in the cage, you're the loneliest per is the loneliest place you can be. Right? It is. It's an experience. I, it, well, it, it, uh, it, you can't you can't uh, mimic that that you know unless you're in a street fight. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there will be some nerves there, but you know like we talked about a little bit, that other guy will be feeling, you know, Connor will be feeling a little bit of that dust. And that's a good thing. Fear is not a bad thing. Um, right. And that's what he was talking about. So he's like, cause they asked him, are you afraid going in here? They asked Dustin and Dustin said, well, I think it's a healthy fear because right. if I said I wasn't, I'd be lying. I mean, I think everyone has a healthy amount of fear. It's just how you let it either drive you or motivate you. You know, he's very, very poised. Well, that's a good, yeah, that's a good point that you bring up, poise, and and because actually that fight or flight, you know, response that our bodies give us, for example, you know, if a lion was literally, that's the fight or flight that you feel in your body, and it's kind of similar in fighting, you feel that a little bit, but the trick is who can control that more and not let it overwhelm them, and again, stay poised, um, and I think they're both you know, 50-50, they're, they're, you know, I don't think one has more of an advantage than the other in that department. Right. And I think, honestly, Connor played the game last night better as the aggressor, you know, trying Mm -hmm. to get in Dustin's head. But Dustin was very smooth with comebacks. I mean, it's a fight in the press conference. It's, It's a mental fight. If you get a few jabs in mentally, it does make a difference in the ring itself. So one of them was slick, and I told you this last night. Um, Basically, um mcgregor said yeah you know i like box with floyd mayweather and all this other stuff you know like you know i'm still the same man i was and dustin turns to him and says yep and i did the same thing he did to you and i'm like oh right i don't think he's getting under dustin's skin i mean he's um you know you can kind of tell when you see a guy getting flustered um you know we talked about deontay wilder and tyson fury yep. which we'll get into all that but he's taking an approach of being silent i believe in this whole press conference leading up um so there is an interesting factor that goes into that with the the mind games and uh, you're spot on with that you know if you can get under if i can get under your skin before the fight and i know that you're in trouble man exactly and that's why i was saying mcgregor even though dustin was very poised and acted more professional Mm business-like mcgregor was still hitting those low blows like because if you could get people not so much afraid of you under your skin just to rattle your cage so you're too angry to really think you won right right but yeah that was a very interesting press conference but no on paper going back to what we're saying on paper they look the same almost but when it comes to their stance when it comes to their style of fighting it's interesting and once again um I want to see more on the ground this time. Let's just, before we go to the next thing, I really want to go see more on the ground, you know, because they both have experience in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And the only ones to really, I, I, that really stood out to me as a loss for Connor was Khabib, who God knows is explosive as all get out, right? With his legs, right. takedowns. Like there's, once Khabib gets you on the ground, it's like a, it's like a black widow putting a moth in, in a whip. Well, they're both brown belts. So that should you know, pretty even itself out, it, it should be a... With Dustin you know, and uh, Connor, right? Right. I mean, they're both brown belts and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. For those of you that don't know at home, normally it takes a number of years to get past blue belt alone in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So please give these men the credit. I just want to see it happen more than just one takedown this time and then Connor goes to the gate. And you know we'll I mean? give them an idea how brown belt, black belt, where on the spectrum is that? So here's the thing, guys, and thank you, Stephen. I do appreciate that. So back in ancient times, everybody wonders even why belts are a thing. Right. You want to go into a classroom or a school, mind you, and like you're in elementary school, you want to put a kindergartner with fifth graders, correct? Right. This is not how it works. You have to literally make a ranking system. So when it comes to white belt, they normally start out with a white belt around their waist, and they would not change their belt. Now we interchange them because we know about, you know, cleanliness and being safe and all that jazz. But over time, you would never wash your belt. So mm. it would change color until it hit black. Wow, man, that's interesting. Yes. So 
black belt, you knew who you were messing with. You're like, this guy's been around a long time. And if you've seen how a cloth like gets dirty, hey, that's why they have they have at schools even today. If you touch someone's belt, they want to punch you. They don't even know why they want to punch you. They just want to punch you. Because it back in the day, if you were to touch the belt, it's kind of like diminishing their work, right? Wow, and I didn't know that. That's that's cool, man. That's right. cool. So when we talk about belt ranking systems, they did have to hit and test for these belts and earn them. Um, funny thing is that he actually earned Connor earned his brown his brown belt in jujitsu after beating Dustin the first time. Really? In one seventy eight, he earned that. So the thing is now, what's interesting is that they both are like I said, both brown belts in jujitsu. We've only seen striking really from them, except from Dustin's part. We did have that one takedown from Connor. I mean, mm -hmm. to Connor, but Connor, once again, got to the cage, stood up, did what he was supposed to do, got him off him for a second. But then we saw that that leg was getting injured more and more. And that's when the fight ended. So, like I said, I like to see more of their skills on the ground. And that's why I really want to see more of a longer fight from both parties. Yeah, for sure. Well, you want to get into uh, some keys to victory? Yes, speaking of which. So, right here, let's start with Dustin. Like, what does he need to do in in the second fight. Like we talked about earlier this week, you think he really needs to stay, do what he did the first, I mean, the second time, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, I think if he can land those kicks, great. Cause he has that, he has that reach, right? But once again, it doesn't just start the ring again. P people, they are gonna be, they were playing this for months. They are anticipating that low leg kick again. They are anticipating a takedown. So for Dustin, it's really, can he stop McGregor's flow again? That's one thing. And let's talk about also how Dustin is a southpaw. McGregor's not used to that, so he has that as to his advantage. Because McGregor is a southpaw, but I don't think he's used to, like, having someone give him his own medicine. You know what right. I mean? Well, you know, everybody's predominantly right-handed, you know, in the uh, society. But that that's true. When you get a boxer in there and he's fighting a southpaw, um, you know, they don't typically get a lot of work with uh, South Balls. Right. And so when you're a South Ball fighting a South Ball, I mean, there's going to be more room than you would be a South Ball versus an Orthodox. Right. So that's where people are usually more uncomfortable because they're not used to fighting that close. But now McGregor's fighting a little further away, which gives Dustin that room he needs for that kick, by the way. Right. So it's interesting in that regard. But also, I mean, when it comes to uh, when it comes to Dustin, he can take advantage of, and this is what Daniel Cormier said. So, hey, I'm not just, you know, shooting this from my head. He, he said that I noted too is that McGregor really focuses on that left a lot. Like when he throws that cross, he really is kind of leaning in with that cross and like believes in it so much, kind of like an ace in the hole. That but straight the cross same, that he's throwing. Right. But it kind of, it leaves you vulnerable too when you lean, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so if Dustin can slip the cross quick enough, possibly he can counter really well with one of those knockout shots that he delivers. Right. Right. Now that's, a, I mean, he's a, he's a counter puncher. Connor is right. right. So he's going to be trying to counter Dustin a lot, you know, shooting over his jab. Um, but yeah, Connor does, which is similar to what Floyd does a lot. Floyd with shooting a straight right hand down the middle. Um, but typically when Floyd does that, you know, he's in the ring and he's he's clenching up after that. So he'll, he'll come in with that straight right hand mm -hmm. um, and clench up. But as far as Connor goes, I, I think he has to keep the fight in the middle of the ring. And then you talking about the ground a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think he's in trouble. I think he's in serious trouble if the fight goes to the ground mm -hmm. simply because I just don't think he's comfortable there i know he can hold his own but right. you know thinking nate diaz khabib um right. i think his his best bet is to keep that fight in the middle of the ring and counter and and, and use his jab all night but um because like i said he is the better boxer than, than dustin right and use and use that reach to his advantage for sure correct like the hand reach the arm reach that two inches Mm -hmm. um, very true. I mean, I, I agree with you 100% there. That's a smart gameplay. But yeah, like, let's talk about that actually with Nate Diaz. Let's talk about um, Khabib again. Like, these guys are very explosive, known for their ground game. Um, it's different. And, and I know people were just saying, well, he just said it was brown belts, right? But it's different when you have brown belts 
that are just rolling around, no offense at a Brazilian jiu-jitsu, tra- uh, do it maybe three times a week. Then you have professional fighters who do this for a living. Right. It's a different ball game. <laughs> you know? It is intense. So, but Nate Diaz, he was known for that. He also had, when Conor McGregor and him fought the last time, he had heavy, um, he had heavyweights in his camp that he sparred with. That's, and he's that's, a good boxer. Uh, he's a hell of a boxer. Hell of a great, boxer. Great boxer. And then you have the best grapple in the world, once again, Khabib, even though he's retired, I hope he comes back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to, to lose against him, I mean, I think anyone in the world would, obviously. So, but when it comes to Dustin, how does Dustin stack up against those two? Do you think when it comes to ground game? Uh, I don't think there's any uh, comparison. Nate is a jujitsu guy. He got a you know good jujitsu background, and Khabib is Khabib. He's a beast. Um, That's all it said about Khabib. <laughs> yeah, he he <laughs> is man. He's a different animal. That guy. But yeah. I, I think Connor can hold his own. I just think you know if he gets away from that um, because they're gonna get on the ground, start rolling. Um, it takes a lot out of you, a lot out of you. Um, so if he, he kind of gets caught in a bad situation, I think anything can happen. I think Connor, would you say Connor is as fluid on the stand up game as Khabib is fluid on the ground game? Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and I think you're right. To be honest, I'll agree with you again when it comes to standing on your feet and trying to play this chess match of striking with Dustin. Mm-hmm. It's the smartest move because Dustin wouldn't have done that takedown if he didn't think he could t- uh, take out McGregor that way. Right. Exactly. There will be that chess match there, you know, going back and forth, Connor checking the leg kicks. If that's not working, what's the next, um, you know, game? Go for a takedown. Exactly. So, and those are very hard, very hard to do. So, with Connor, I mean, you know, let's go back to before we get to predictions, right? Which was interesting because we talked about this a, a little bit. The reason why Connor got his nickname Mystic Mac was actually back in 2014 after he had beat Dustin. This right. is why this is a very, very iconic fight because when a fighter gets his nickname, that says something. Now he's going back to the person where he got the nickname from. So he literally said after knocking, um, getting that TKO for Dustin. The first time, 178, he said, I told you guys, and he did. I told you guys in round one, I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to take this guy out. And that's where he got Mystic Mac from. He said, and that's why they call me Mystic Mac, because I know these things. That was huge. For someone to walk the walk, I mean, talk the talk, then walk the walk, that is big. Only You can only compare that to Muhammad Ali, who was the greatest of all time, right? Then you fast forward to 257 what we were just talking about, he loses, right? And at the press conference last um, the other night, he was he was then saying, the reporter was saying, so I need to know, because people are really wondering about this because of those calf kicks, what are you going to do about them? Right. And then also about, you have the nickname Mystic Matt. What, you're saying you're going to put him on a stretcher. Connor said he's going to put Dustin on a stretcher. You're going to knock him out and send him home. But what round is that going to happen? Right. I believe Connor indicated you'll have to watch to see that, which tells me something because normally Connor will call out a round that he's going to take someone out when he says that. Mm-hmm. So that says one thing. Does it mean that your your intention is to knock him out? You have that confidence, or is your confidence shaken because you just got knocked out six months ago and you haven't had that much time to he work with? Try to hedge his bet a little bit. We talked about, yeah, hedge his bet a little bit, kind of maybe take a little pressure off himself. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, he does typically say, hey, you know, first round. He did that with Jose Aldo, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that was about eight seconds or whatever that was, five seconds. That was over. That that wasn't hot. First of all, I'd be really ticked off I trained that much and it was over in five seconds, I'm just saying. Yeah. (laughs) But like you said, I mean, that kind of plays a part into it. He He's not given a prediction, typically what he normally does. Um, so, I mean, that, that again, getting back to mentality, that plays a part into this, and, and we'll find out. We'll find out here soon. Big part, big part. So, what do we got for your picks? Let's talk about that, Steven. My pick, I, I went back and forth on this numerous times simply because, like I said, I'm a Louisiana boy. Dustin, Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, I'm from Louisiana myself, like I said. But 
I didn't want to pick with my heart. I got to go with, you know, what I see happening. And I think uh, Connor by TKO in the third round. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this last night. We did. And the thing is, is that I will say this, even though we both say Connor, folks, we're both putting out there. And while I'm saying at least the third round, I think it's either going to be to be honest, I think it's going to be a TKO too. Dust is pretty tough, but also I could see them going the distance because they know each other well enough at this point. Well, before you pick, I want to say the over under in the fight, right? How many uh, rounds? Yeah. Um, it is at two and a half rounds. Two and a half. So that means mm -hmm. you can either bet going over two and a half rounds or under. Now, before you, I wanted to throw that stat out there of Connor, 19 of 22 of his fights were by knockout, right? 19 of 22. 17 of those were in round one. 17 of that man's 22 fights ended in round one. So if you were to, you know, two and a half rounds over or under. Uh, but that's my pick, Connor, third round TKO. I think it'll go over. I think they kind of, you know, they know each other too well. Um, I think Dustin will hang on, but I think Connor's going to be picking him apart all night, counter punching him, uh, backing him up, putting all kind of pressure on him. Mm -hmm. But I think Dustin is so tough and he'll be able to hold his own for a little while. Um, but I see early in the third round TKO by Connor. I say third middle round. I mean, sorry, third middle of the round. Um, and also if it does not happen in the third, I think they will go the distance which it's a five round fight for a title for a title. So it's going to be really big guys. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's basically like how the Joker said of Batman, you know, what happens when an immovable object meets an unstoppable force. Exactly what happens. You have a person who's very not stationary, but more of a brawler, right? Very sturdy in his fighting, um, very technical. But then you also have a person who's very technical, but also is very, but you know, is very comfortable standing up, as a counter striker, as a force to be reckoned with. The only question really remains to um, is how well they are on the ground. You know, that we haven't really seen that much of it. I think T Dustin, as Steven had said before, is more comfortable on the ground, which is a big factor because if this ends in submission, I'm going to just throw my hands up in the air. <laughs> I really am. I'm going to be a little irritated because we came here to see a striking match, right? Yeah. And it well, Connor said, I don't know where I saw this um, comment from him, but he said he does not count his submissions and his his losses only knockouts which is ludicrous to me uh, wow that makes zero sense no. zero sense to me but um yeah i i think connor's gonna put uh you know all kind of pressure on on dustin all night and i think um i it's for an interim title yes so for those of you that's a good point Stephen. thank you oh, so for those of you at home who do not know khabib who is the champion still. Right. But he has pretty much retired from the UFC, which is unfortunate because he was a one heck of a fighter, one heck of a grappler, explosive all night. Everybody kind of wanted to be him. He beat McGregor. He's one of the few that did. But the thing is, is that once his father passed, I think he kind of lost his fight. Like, you have to have your why clearly in this profession of why you're doing it. And mm -hmm. his big why was his dad. So he retired. And now they're saying because he is no longer in the picture, but still is a champion, technically has a belt. They're calling it an interim champion title for the UFC, which means that you're pretty much a first contender. That's all it is. It's your, your first up and right. be able to come back. You're the first one to get dibs. Um, and so now it's not only bragging rights, but it's saying that you are, even though it's interim, you really are the champion in this kind of situation, unless Khabib comes back from the dead so in a sense it's huge um it's huge for both fighters because once you have a trilogy you can't say it's a fluke anymore right you lose. and that's all I, I i think this fight is huge for connor i think it is just massive i think dustin can lose this fight and come back from it um you know and he'll be fine right but i think connor is in a situation where you know, you talk that much and, you you, you know, like he does. Um, it's time to back it up, man. And I don't want to hear nothing about I don't count 
um, you know, submissions is, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Cause that, you know, just go in there and win. And I got a lot of respect for that man. I got a lot of respect for him. I just want to see him put on a show. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, we have respect for both fighters. It takes the world to get to where they are even standing right now. To right. Be honest, it's a very, I mean, very slim to none chance. I mean, we all, we both know as martial artists, what kind of um, position you're putting yourself in by putting yourself in front of millions of people against someone who trains just as hard as you and you do day in and day out for one goal to be champion. Right. right. And right. what you're saying really resonates with me because I'm like, this is not boxing. You can't say he bit my ear or something dirty when he took you down or, you know, something like that. I mean, like, obviously you can't bite someone's ear in UFC either, but I'm just saying like boxing very straightforward stand up, but UFC, you have way more ways of losing. Right. And that's, that's what I'm saying. That kind of aggravated me a little bit. I, I just like, I, I'm a huge fan of him. I, I just, you know, he's done very well for himself in the sport come from, you know, nothing basically um, and worked his way up, made a name for himself. I just want to see him, um, you know, put on a show. Like I know he will tonight. Um, I, I, I see it going a lot like the first fight. I see it going a lot like the first fight, unless, unless something changes where Dustin gets him on the ground and um, it may like go, you know, all five rounds. Let me recap. I'll disagree with you this one. I think it's going to be a different fight from what okay. we said before. And here's why. And I'm going to go back to this point is that again, we had how many years between 2014 and 2021? Right, yeah, seven-year difference between that the first and the uh, second fight. And they both have literally come a long way. I'm not even talking talk about the second fight. I'm just talking about everything from 178 to 276. I'm sorry, 264. Everything that's happened, Dustin, Victory after victory, right? Connor was on the throne for a second, got knocked out by Khabib, then lost to Mayweather in a big battle. For those of you, and I'm sure you guys can resonate at home, if you keep losing, it is harder to get a W. Oh, yeah. There's, and, you it, know, your mind starts playing tricks on you. and It's harder. And, and the thing is, there's age there, too. They're both the same age in time. But also, when it comes to – am I frozen? Hold on. Yeah. You okay, Steven? No, nah, yeah, you froze on me, but go okay. ahead, man. I can hear you. Okay. So, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. When it comes to you losing again, that comeback story, that's why it's so great, is because you get out of that funk. A lot of people do not. They stay there. It doesn't matter who you lose to. You can lose to the top – Contender in boxing, top contender in UFC, it's still a loss, and it's still on a stage full of people. And that's what I'm – if – if who needs this fight? This is a huge – you know, where does he go from here? Where does Connor go? I know he's got all kind of fights out there, but, you know, I mean – and I, I think he'd be fine if he loses this fight, but he don't want to lose this fight. And he wants to do the, win this fight in, in, you know, good fashion. He wants to put on a show. Right. I think he'll, if he loses his fight financially, hopefully he's fine because he's right. got sponsorships, you know, he's on his own alcohol, you know, he's the inspiration of Ireland, so to speak, right? He's really helped raise UFC to the level it's at today. But as a fighter, I don't think he's going to be okay after this. No, it's hard. It's hard to come back from that. It is. And there is always a time, me and Steve have been around long enough to know every fighter has an expiration date correct your body can only take so much your body is going to catch up with you at some point the question is is conor mcgregor expired at this point what do you think steven i say no i say no i think he's still you know 32 still a young man um i think he's got plenty left in the tank some juice you know there to but it i i think this is do or die i will say that I'm going to end with this. You know, folks, it's one thing to talk it, but can you walk it? That's the biggest thing. Like, anyone yep. can talk, but can you walk? So, can you walk? Yeah, you're exactly right. Conor McGregor still back up what he says. And, the, and going back to that comment of saying you'll have to pay to see that tells me a lot. 
that this, not only is Dustin a different fighter because he was very emotional one seventy eight, right. very emotional. Past so you're two not changing your close. pick on me, are you? You no, no. Up. I'm just saying that they're different fighters <laughs> from where they were before. Right. We'll see how this goes. Look, do do you see any questions on your side, by any chance? Uh, I don't think I see anything on there, but um, you know, if we can always follow up if we need to. Yep, guys. If you have any questions, let us know during the day. You know, you can always ask uh, by DMing me, Herb Jones. Um, you also see us on Instagram as well. Um, we mine is Neogenesis Fitness, and Stephen, what's yours? Mine is a uh, underscore Stony S T O N E Y Fit. And that work. So I want to just let you know, um, Stephen does personal training out in Jacksonville, okay, um, Florida, and he does it in person. Uh, very great. Me, I do online training, so I do that anywhere in the United States. And also, I have a partner, uh, Kayla Perry, who is a, a registered dietitian who takes care of that as well. She also does individual services, whether you're working with me or Steven, if you like to do that. And also, stay tuned because I am doing group fitness later this month online. So if you guys want to hear more about that, please DM um, us at Neogenesis Fitness. That'd be great. I appreciate it. And one other thing, tomorrow, we'll be doing a coach rewind. Same time, same place, 11 a.m. And we will actually break down the fight me and Steve will be keeping a close eye on all the action that's happening in the octagon, so stay tuned. Hey, good work, man. I appreciate it. You too, Stephen. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you for your time too. Have a great day.